And here we go. This is Flash at the Dork Table on uh, Saturday, the 19th of December, 2020. Give me a comeback on the microphone situation here. I think I did everything right. Haven't done it in a bit. Been laying off the radio for a bit. Taking a hiatus, a break. Yeah. Sitting on my dead ass watching the grass die. Hmm. But we were hanging out in chat this afternoon and Grim uh, Mental Pancakes came by to say hi, so I figured uh he came by to see to hear hear a dork table. So I figured I'd at least do a dork table for my buddy Mental Pancakes. He does seem entertained by the way I see all this shit. So thanks Grimner for this uh place to banter from, you know, reallibertymedia.com. Nice little place to hang out. Plenty to do if you have a computer. Ha, 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 ha. Anyway, and if you're in a chatty kind of a mood, we have bots and bodies up the wazoo to entertain your typing extravaganza. And we got Barman and Beetle, Cowboy, Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Rob works, Circle O, hello, buddy. Flash somebody, that's me. Frumpy work, Jays, Nines, Jays, Meister Brow, Prince, Vanna White, Weather Dork, The Phantom, Asmo 2, Beth Z, C, C, 6, 6, Cyborg, Noodle, A, Suck, uh, Mental, Dork Cakes, Duh, Hey, Duh, and Civ, Eric, Java Doctor, hey Java, Kozu, Kiss, Matt, WJ2O2, Mr. Snick, Ponsas, and the luckiest Roger, holiest Roger, I was close, anyway, so I'm gonna do a, a solo dork table, and Mary's off doing her secret Grammy Mary stuff during the holiday time. And that woman, even a freaking head-on car collision this year, didn't stop her one bit. Slowed her down a little bit, I suppose. But <laughs> she's back in the game already. So uh, we'll we'll be back as, you know, me and her doing the dark table together. As soon as the festivities of these here holidays come and go, as we always do. We've done it this way since we started, I, I guess. I don't remember now. I'm so old. Yesterday looks like tomorrow and stuff. But uh, hmm. So what I got on the show tonight, as far as conversation goes, I called this episode of The Dark Table, I Smell a Rat. <laughs> and and the, first kind of po- the first topic I'm going to guess deal with is, I think we're either Palestinians or pirates. There's there's nothing else left. Everything's been uh, regulated, stopped, banned, secured, stapled. They're going to protect us from ourselves by, you know, fucking with us. <laughs> hey, let's watch these idiots run around and wear masks and see how long they put up with it. <laughs> I mean, Christ, there's enough information out there to show you that the only reason that the state's doing this shit is they, they can. They, they're wielding their sword of power over helpless victims. People that people that watch movies about viruses. And, you know, the end of the world and space exploration, Star Trek, shit like that. Took it a little too far. <laughs> you know, it's, it's one thing to, uh, I don't know, take in what you read and make a reality out of it to some point or another. But some of this shit just got out of hand. It got out of uh, the control of the few in it or the many, and it got into the hands of the few. And we've just sat back as a collective and just watched it all happen. Now, I'm not the only one that speaks in the tone that I speak. There are others, yet sadly, most of them don't see the point of doing a radio podcast because it's such an unpopular you know, side to be on in this war on whatever the fuck they're fighting against this month. It's always something. 
And that tells you right there, if you're fighting a war, you're a sucker. Get the fuck out. My jeez. There's no such thing as a war. It's just all in your mind. Except for the folks that get bombed and, you know, annihilated by weapons. That part's real. The rest of it's just an illusion. So, hmm, makes me wonder, you know. If you didn't tell me it happened, how would I ever know? I'd just be sitting here in my little Danish paradise with my little Danish wife, doing little Danish things, just living that quiet, easy life that I, somehow or another, tripped into that I, I didn't really expect to get. <laughs> it kind of surprised me when it happened. I went, wow, cool. Hmm. So now I, I sit in uh, mental and physical, basically, retirement, you know, where I don't have to dance to make the world fucking please me anymore. So, hmm. yeah, man, I'm telling you, duh, the Danish Danish food is good. We had some friends over for dinner last night. We got a couple of that uh, I met this kid downtown one day over a T-shirt. Something like that. Only potheads would recognize. We smoked together over a couple of years now. and He's got himself a new girlfriend. And they've since cohabitated. He moved out of the apartment building and gave up all the, you know, gave up all that life to start something different. And it seems that uh, me and Sir get along fine with these two. They're like us, only they're younger. It's, it's amazing. And <laughs> I think the, uh, the reason we get along so well is because the way we think is so uh, rare. And it, it's it's not as common as it should be, but it, it's not as impossible to find other people that think like this. There are They are out there, but it's uh, it's not like a revolutionary kind of thing. It's, it's like, hmm, how do you explain it? Knowing is most of it. Ninety Probably 90% of why we bother to even communicate any of this shit is because we know it finding somebody else that knows it well there you go you're you're there already there's no further to go no convincing no selling no teaching uh nothing like that it's very strange but it's happening with young people instead of peers age peers so i'm blown away that the three people that are the closest to me in physical life and think so as much like me as I've ever seen are you know so young, forty three, twenty seven, and twenty one. I think the girl, the young girl, Christine is her name, and Magnus is the young fella. But I can't say his name properly in Danish, so I just say it the way it's spelled. Let's see. Everyone is no, not everyone here. This is a, a retirement village. There's people wandering around in the street that are 20 years older than me and you know they're still walking or riding bikes and shit and 80 years old it's not uncommon of course there's a lot of people that you know life crippled and they're in you know little buggy chairs and whatnot what do you call those scooter things they drive around and but see now they've killed society here they they did away with the bars last nail in the coffin so the future is going to bring something. Who knows what? But we got to outlast this drama of the, the COVID hoax going on. And it seems daily that the governments and shit get more deep into it and the people rebel from it. So and in the meantime, we'll just wait it out because there will be so many people that are misinformed, uneducated, um, trusting, religious, something, some reason they'll have to uh, overcome any objection to getting a vaccine. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. This is good for me. The state said so. Ooh, ouch. Okay. But uh, how do you... Hmm. See, judgment is a really... Sh it's a like a razor's edge to stand on because they these people that I'm going to judge, they're going to judge me right back. So I've chosen to take the uh, the softer way around all that and just surround myself physically with people that agree with me and then the rest of them can just stay the fuck away <laughs> i don't i don't need to uh start shit right now i'm 60 odd years old so let's you know let's call it a truce at this point war is over people let's let's not waste any more of our time whatever time i got left 
I sure as hell am not going to waste it um, fighting to protect something. Fuck, what? That's it's, See, it's all that uh, propaganda that they shit all over us with for our, you know, all our tw- first 20 years. Give us all the wrong information. Feed us all the wrong shit. Send us out into a world completely unarmed for what's really going to happen. And uh, <laughs> charge you an arm and a leg to get an education. Like that means anything. Hey, look, the ink dried on this special piece of paper. I'm smart. Right. And they sold this crap to other people. Other people believe that just because you went to a special building and did stuff, whatever happened there, and this other guy in the special building said you did it good enough for him, now you're one of them. You can look down on the rest of the punks in society. Wait a minute. There seems to be something wrong with the uh, the way that society deals with the idea of education. <laughs> I smell a rat. You know? when, when things should be so much better than they are, and they could be, but average Joe hasn't got the fucking first clue that there's anything really wrong beyond what they are told is wrong. They don't think for their self to find a wrong. They join a group to fight a wrong, which kind of backs up what I said. To me, anyway. Maybe not to you guys. Hmm. But I got this little group in the reallibertymedia.com chat. Grimmer, Rob Works, and duh. They basically, frumpy sometimes, they agree with my outlandish point of view, I suppose, that I have. Because uh, I think the whole freaking political thing is a big scam from the start. All of it. They just had to figure out a way. How do you control people and make them think it's them doing it? <laughs> well, let's let's try to figure this one out, Johnny. And here we are. 2020. Technology up the wazoo. As Larry Woods has showed us over the last couple lifetime, he's been at it. There are better ways to do things we do today that would produce a better product. But the greedy bastards that kill us with waste, making all the money, they don't want no part of it. Most people are beyond giving a fuck about any of that now. Now they're just trying to not get the virus and die. (laughs) Whatever. I don't know how long they're going to pull this off for me. If it's been a year and all you know is what you hear from way over there, look around you. You know, Around you is still the same. Somebody's lying about something somewhere. It's probably not you. <laughs> but, well, I guess you got to trust your leadership. You know, because it's taking you on a cruise, baby. It's to places you could never go without them. <laughs> Debt, poverty... Self mutilation, suicide. That's what government seems to be, you know, encouraging anyhow. I don't see a lot of government encouraging anything positive. It's all hide and cower, the corona is gonna kill you, your big pussy, so here take a vaccine, this'll save you. But it won't save you, but if you don't take the vaccine you can't fly. <laughs> see, well, anyway, there's an underlying message in, within that bullshit about uh, the people that make decisions <laughs> that are sitting in seats of decision power, shit like that. The shit they do behind your back is so fucked up that you're distracted by the shit that you see and you never really take a lot of time to look at the crap going on behind everything else. Like the Noahide laws that came to the USA. So if you're wondering, I doubt many people would admit it, but if you're wondering why is it all right in one state to do this and that and the other thing, but in another state, how come it's not all right to do the same fucking thing the same fucking way? they got to do it a different way over there. And I would blame it on the uh, the Jews involved in your politics, just dividing and conquering you from your from within. It's obvious to look onto it from a distance. If I was in it, I don't, I don't know how I'd be reacting. If I was still living in North Carolina, I think my whole outlook on the the world would still be, you know, this way I had 
thought about shit before I really gave traveling the <laughs> the attention I gave it the last couple of years. Well, before, you know, not these last few years, but the last few years after from when I was in North Carolina to the time I took off from it. And just by luck, you know, fortune. I don't mean, it, I was trying to remember somebody was explaining up. It was a band that just was in the right place at the right time, you know. They played something and somebody that was famous liked it and boom, they got right going. They drove there from Missouri in the summertime and they had an album out in November. And uh, I can't, like I usually, I can't put the name and the dates and shit together without writing it down, and I didn't. But the point still remains, there's dumb, blind, doodah luck out there, you know. And then there's, uh, well, what else would there be? I don't know. People think they have ideas and they can make plans and do this and do that. And I think life just surprises the shit out of us. <laughs> You think one thing and then, hey, what the fuck was that? But I could be wrong. But this is the dork table, and we, we say shit like that at the dork table. But back to Palestinians and pirates. What I mean by all that <coughs> is years ago, I started to mock the uh, Americans in my own little humble way by making a point of saying, welcome to Palestine. Because I could see the, the Jews taking over from Congress and the Senate and pushing laws. I'm paying attention to the shit behind the shit that everybody else is looking at. You know, Trump moved an embassy for a reason, a huge reason. It's beyond the, uh, you can't just talk about it in a chat room. It's deeper and deeper than that. These are the politics that really uh, control all the, all the shit that you see is one thing. And, they just fucking lie to us. I hate Jesus. There's really no other way to speak of it than that. You know, we're just, we're sitting, um, we're open to life because we're human. You know, we're carbon-based life forms. We want to absorb shit. It's like our nature to learn this and seek that. Whatever your interest is and uh, the powers that be learned how to manipulate all this years and years ago and as the technology improved, they found better and better ways to control the masses. You know? And all along the road, the things I was told to watch out for is look out for shit when people tell you it's for your own good. That's usually not a very good thing. You're not going to be smiling when they're finished. <laughs> <You know? clears throat> but we live in a world where a collective ass raping is it's okay with me because... I got me a house and a car and little money in the bank. So, well, let's put up with this shit because I don't want to live outside. And I think when the system figured out how to control that fear, you know, money, 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 money. Got to have some fucking money. If you don't have money, you're going to die. And if that doesn't work and you got money, then they scare you with health problems. That they gave you through the food that you're buying from them. <laughs> it's priceless. The show, the shit show. The one I'm in, it never ends. You know? These fucking dames, their their people are just the same any as anywhere I've ever been. I'm not bitching about the companionship. I'm con I'm just bitching about the government. <laughs> bunch of assholes like America and England. Stupid. But they keep people in a state of fear where they can't think clearly. They give them shitty information to work with and they threaten them with, this is going to happen if you don't do this. Well, there you go. Most people cave, you know. Or they're like the, the closer friends I was talking about earlier, where they'll deal with it if it should happen. But nothing's happened. So, hmm. but I'm American, so hmm. I'm trained to be, you know, aware of what's coming around the corner that you can't see because <laughs> slap, you know, so as the chains got tighter here, it's so insignificant to the lifestyle that we have. It doesn't really make a difference. In fact, if anything, closing down the bar, 
probably a good thing for me to not go to town and drink. <laughs> Give me more time to stay home and smoke. I mean, uh, be honest with you. But society, being a society shut down, the way I see the world, anyhow, another doorway opened, and uh, I got some friends that see the world the way I do, and we like to have a meal together and listen to music from, you know, my stuff, and we'll listen to music from their stuff. Shit like that. Just just like uh, living life used to, has always been. And so I mean, my my daily existence has not been damaged by the corona hoax in any fucking way outside of my looking down on people for not pursuing this further and and, and facing it's a freaking fraud and stopping it instead of going along with it to survive. But here I am, you know what the fuck? I'm the guy that says, well, I ain't going to do that. And I'm the one that doesn't do it. I scare my, you know, I scare my wife with my attitude about, so she doesn't really need the trouble. So I, I figure staying home for a little while might do me some good. You know, it's wintertime any fucking way. Where, who wants to go out when it's zero degrees, you know? Uh, polar bears and what else? Like cold fish. <laughs> something that lives in the freaking cold rabbits I don't know I don't care for the freaking cold myself but um, I've lived in it for what, this is nine nine years this far up north where uh, the wind blows it's not I've, we have we haven't got snow problems in these islands I lived in the islands in uh, Scotland too and for some reason the, I don't know what it is maybe this because of the water the islands don't take as much snow as, or it could be a, something else. Maybe I'll ask Beetle. He might know. I don't know much about weather except it's warm or it's cold. There you go. I once said, if it's under 72 degrees, I'm I'm cold. I can tell. My my feet get cold. And people laugh. They go, ah, 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 you're funny. Oh, well, okay. But it's not a good or a bad thing. It's just it's a knowledge thing. Because I've been living in the north and gets over 72 degrees about eight days a year. <laughs> so, no, I'm joking about that. But it stays relatively uh, comfortable. There's no real extremes to deal with, you know. Just, uh, it's really a nice place to be is what I'm saying. <laughs> I guess it's, with with the world on fire, and people so miserable about shit, I feel terrible about feeling so good, I guess. Um, hmm. uh, it's not, and it's not like I've got the market cornered. My, my friends that I was referring to earlier, they, they themselves seem like ha fairly happy, uh, consistently happy people. There's not a lot of uh, depression going on around you know, me, except for the internet webs. All I got to do is just open up, what is it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's similar to that kind of thing. Yeah, it's a, a closed-knit, small, old people kind of place, Grim. The, they've known each other, you know. They know outsiders when they see them. And the guys that drink down at the train, I tell them all the time, whenever I can you know, remember to, anyhow, as long as I know they're there, I feel better about society you know when they're not there anymore then i i know we lost so you know and they're and they're the ones suffering doing the drinking but that's what they want to do and i just use that as a gauge to figure out how long the social society is gonna you know take to really slap the chains on everyone start making people behave and all that horse shit or it'll push it the other way yeah, you know, people will do what what we're. I think we're we're taught to uh, react and and interact in really fucked up ways that are drastically uh, negative. You know? They never work. They never have worked. History, whatever history is, <laughs> but time and again, if you go through anything, you find out that 
going in with a negative, you're going to come out with a negative. So, hmm. And that's how I see this violence and control stuff. It's all negative. It's not positive. They're not looking to help us. They're looking to help them using us. And the saddest part about it is the collective us doesn't have the fucking collective brain to tell them no. No, we just keep go digging the hole deeper for them. Yeah, we'll do it. Sure, we'll do it. Shut, hey, what? Masks? Sure, we'll wear masks. Vax? Yeah, we'll do vax. Come on, start a line. Get some people over here. And then the media is bought and paid for. So if there's any fucking resistance, the lawyers didn't stop it, you know, with their bullshit law and their paid for, bought and sold enforcement, we would probably not be going through whatever we're going through. But yeah, this is, uh, it's a sad way to see big things die. England and America. Um, damn. Australia, shit, I remember when people were, uh, <laughs> when Australia was like a place to go, now it's like a communist country to avoid. And that's, of course, according to the internet webs. I've never been to Australia. And then, of course, we have all this uh, <laughs> COVID. Now you got to get a COVID passport to travel. Thank you. I didn't want to travel any fucking more anyway. Sure, glad they didn't do this 20 years ago when I was doing all the shit I was doing. I mean, talk about getting through. So it's like uh, I must have a, either a lucky streak or fucking see the future. <laughs> I want to claim that one so bad and lie and tell everybody how I knew all this was going to happen because I'm so fucking bright. But I didn't. I I didn't for a minute think that the. Uh, Wow, I never thought that my peers, you know, my blood family and people that I knew would ever give up what we had collectively over there. But it's all gone now. Now, there's little pockets of it. You know, Grimner's got his little pocket. and Rob works, seems to, you know. And then there's people that want to move on and get on somewhere else. But, uh, wow, I don't know. I got... I had I'd gone through all that so many years ago. I almost forgot what it feels like <laughs> to want to go somewhere else because I think I'm comfortable where I'm at. And as tight as these people, you know, my my limitations on freedom are way uh, they're way more identifiable than my wife say. I'm more of a picky, detaily look at the way this has happened. Look at and on the broader overall, I'm free to to be, so I really don't have anything to complain about, hmm. except for the uh, the things that they're doing to people through the media with the you know with a bunch of bullshit, and it, it's sad. That's it. no other way. Wow, it must sound freaking uppity to say that, but you know, outside of joining up with the facts. Pro vax people and insisting, hey, yeah, you should get a fucking vax. Are you crazy? But then, out would that make me responsible to go get one? I don't want one. I, no, no, no. So I, I can't find it in in a real way to promote the thing that I wouldn't ever want you to do to me. So I, I really can't seriously say to somebody else, oh yeah, go get a vax. I say it as a joke, you know, because I'm being a prick. But mean it. I think it would be a, a either an illness sentence or a death sentence, one way or the other. Whatever the states got up their sleeve, whatever they're doing to people today is uh, this is 2020, folks. Remember, we're supposed to be flying around in spaceships and time traveling, and no, nope, we're still burning oil like a bunch of fucking monkeys. But they're gonna go to <laughs> they're gonna go to electric. <laughs> wow, what a they didn't think this one out very well. Yeah. Now, I learned that part from listening to Larry. And the answer I come up with is, okay, they've got all these plans to make all the cars run on batteries. Okay, batteries only hold a charge for so long, and they only hold, can be used for such a period of time. And they become waste. Then what? You're back where you started. <laughs> 
no, nobody's really brought that part up is the disposing of the dead battery problem that you're going to have eventually because of the nature of this cycle that they created. And they've had the answer the whole fucking time. Henry Ford built a freaking car bumper to bumper in the 40s made out of hemp. Okay, his first, fuck, I talked about this. His design for an engine went ran on hemp. So, it, ah, this is what I was going to talk with Grim about, but uh, I got a half hour to go, so I guess I'll, I'll start on it here. Anyway, uh, walking down the street to get cigarettes the other day, you know, me and my smoking, and I'm looking at people with masks, and I'm comparing in my mind the illness, my addiction to tobacco, compared to their addiction to government regulation. And then I started to notice, well, there's a big bus there sitting there idling, exhaust fumes going everywhere. Did you know that in some places it's against the fucking law to put a 12-foot garden hose from your exhaust pipe into your car, to roll up all the windows and run the car? Because guess what? It will kill you. You can't legally commit suicide like, you know, that way. <laughs> so, what they did to solve it was they put all the cars outside. See, So, when you breathe in all this crap from all these gas-powered engines over a lifetime, well, it's only a little bit, you know, some. It's not all of it, just, just enough. Just enough, you know. And here I am, 60. And I survived all this shit. Whatever society was trying to accomplish didn't didn't seem to slap me hard enough. I don't know. Maybe I missed a day in school that day. But for a topic for uh, Grim, I'm going to sit in for Cirque on Monday night. She's got family coming over, and uh, she asked me if I'd replace her on her spot. So poor poor Grim. <laughs> he does. I'm sure he'd rather do the connected show with her, but. Anyway, I thought of uh, talking about car exhaust and see where that led. Because I came to hemp, which should have been the first thing that, you know, instead, we're, we're just taught everything backwards. And uh, we're so addicted to this life that we have that no matter what you do, if you don't participate, there's enough people in it to keep it going anyway. So one person by themselves, you're just cutting. It's like leaving YouTube or leaving uh, Facebook. I did that in like, I don't know, 14, 15, something like that, when it wasn't even popular. Pissed off everybody. Well, yeah, it was 14, because uh, me and Cert got married, and my, my children didn't like it. So um, I just vanished. I said, okay, bye. And uh, shut down all that crap. And since then, I've noticed that everybody else is still using it that was using it then. So... The monsters that exist are always going to be there. You just got to find a way to use the monster, either uh, as a, uh, I guess, as a way to survive yourself, or something to know to avoid. You know what you tell other people to do; they never fucking listen anyway. This is all about me. You know, I'm not concerned so much with what other people do. They, I don't really think too many of us really are. That that could be the problem. You know, we're so isolated in, in our self. I don't know. But then I've got the luxury of having a partner at the time I'm in. So, because hmm. when I met Cirque, I was solo. You know, the world was weird. And I was making decisions that were pissing a lot of people off at the time. But I'm still here, you know, so... I don't know, it's like the fear of this virus. If this fucking virus thing was true, was real, they wouldn't have had time to warn anybody. There would have been no need for lockdowns because people would have been dropping dead in the fucking street. But nothing like that ever took place. So what they did was they, they showed you what could be. They purposely made old people that were dying already die a little faster, a little state help. Or at least they explained that to the public to create this thing that we're living in today. <laughs> it's brilliant. I think I'm just jealous because I didn't think of this. You know, I didn't come up with the the way to control an entire globe with words without even threat. You don't have to do anything. Just write some shit on a screen. 
Next thing you know, people in Omaha are wearing masks to go to work. Yeah, 20 years ago, you'd have been laughed out of the fucking room you were standing in talking about how things are today. I'm, I know, I remember those days. Nah, then I, you know, the Twin Towers ain't gonna fall. What are you talking about? You dreaming weirdo, some kind of conspiracy nut. People ain't going to fall for none of this here shit. And here we are, 2020. <sighs> global, it's a global meltdown. I think we hit critical mass. <laughs> In a different way than nuclear, though. You know, well, but that's where it's, it applies to nuclear, but it's, it's like a, it's like a great idea stolen by something. So you can't ever use it and make a good point with it because it always refers to nuclear. And I thought critical mass is a great term. You know, we've hit the end, whatever the end is, we, we hit that a long time ago, but the system, it's magic. It's got internet and movies and electricity and phones and stuff and it can do all these magical things so the people that are being destroyed think they're not because look at all the toys they got to play with and i've played with the toys a little bit on you know but i i go as far as the computer and i stop with the cell phone grim asked me today hey are you mobile and I, oh no, no 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 not me cirque cirque's mobile so, because uh, the internet's part of her uh, thing, so she, eh, it's all you know under her. Eh, lucky me, I get to hide out behind the circle. Lovely, isn't it? But anyway, um, yeah, join a circus and get shot out of a cannon. Well, but Frumpy, I've tried being uh, reasonable about all this since it started. It didn't take me and Mary very long between the two of us to, you know, decide, nah, we're being we're being banged like a drum here, baby. I don't like this one bit. So there you go. You know, and a, a year later kind of shows, well uh, if you trust the system at this point in your life, well, I guess you're not here. Well <laughs> you wouldn't be on the R L M. Well, or would you? I don't know. It's easy to type, I trust the system. But this, that doesn't mean, <clears throat> excuse me, the person typing it actually trusts the fucking system. They're just typing that. How do you know? Maybe I trust it, but verbally I'm saying out loud, oh, I don't, no, no, no. But deep down inside, well, yeah, I trust it to be the miserable fucking failure that I tell you it is. <laughs> I, don't, I don't play games with any of this shit. Cirque's hopeful, you know, as far as uh, optimistic. And the ba I'm the balance point keeping this uh, just aware of what could be and all that kind of shit. But I don't think I, I don't think I worry about it. Paranoia is a, I don't know, how do you define something like that? People like to throw words around that. Apply for a minute or two, you know. And then an hour later, Christ, my mind's gone through 50 other things, and I don't even remember what, you know, what was I paranoid about an hour ago. It's probably evolved into 10 other things. <laughs> you know, because the uh, thinking is a process. It just continues. It never ends. But I've noticed that my filing system practices, how I sort things out and retrieve certain shit mentally is kind of unique to me it is i mean i didn't even really know i did it in any kind of a pattern i thought it was like uh i don't know just reaching into a bag and pulling something out but it seems more restricted than that after all i have to be more specific with my uh, memory thinking and i can attach memories to other things like i watched this really cool movie today the other day it's called Two Young Siblings Fight a Civil War. I'm going to post it just for shits and giggles. But it's a, a, I'm usually not impressed with kids acting. I usually fucking avoid it. The kids are horrible actors. They can't speak. Blah, blah, blah. It's always some gripe. You know? But because I like to open things I'm not sure of and take a look first before I judge them. 
I did that with this movie. <laughs> Nine minutes too. It was it was worth it. I sat I sat my buddy through this. So we were having dinner last night. But before dinner, I, I brought him over to, to watch this nine-minute film, and he was pretty much glued to the movie through the whole thing. And then at the end, as surprised with the end as I was. And movies have two methods to them. They either shove it in your face so you don't think it's what you're saying, or they misdirect you so you'll think it's something else. And this one worked really well. I recommend watching it. If you haven't seen it, it's worth it. It's worth the giggle. Anyway. And those are the kind of, you know, things that in person, that's the kind of shit I do. Pass on movies, music, uh, knowledge about the internet shit. People that I've been exposed to that spoke about things in detail that I can only scratch the surface of. Like Clint Richardson has a great way of explaining being against inoculations. If you listen to the thing from the beginning to where we are now, chances are, <clears throat> you know, everybody's capable of making up their own mind. What I'm thinking is, how do you get somebody that's made up their mind in, a, in a, one way or the other to listen to the other side? It's pretty difficult. It's like trying to convince me that there's a Jesus today. I never would believe it. It would be crazy. Yet, there are people in the world alive right now that would fight and die over that concept. It's insane. And we're in the 21st fucking century, burning coal and oil, living like this when we could do so much better, but we have governments that regulate everything. And then scare us with make-believe viruses to control the populations. Because if we got together at this point with the Internet at our fingertips and actually started to physically do anything about any of the shit that's going on, the state would lose control. They're dying worried, probably worried as fuck about that, because they need enforcement to maintain control. And right now, we're still at the voluntary stage. You know, they're, they're pushing it with, uh, I don't know, verbal mandate or whatever they call it. You're not forced physically yet. But don't push us back or we will. Hmm. And it makes me wonder, where, where does the enforcement come from to actually let these people in power get away with this horrible shit that they do to everybody? You know, it seems to me that it, it involves all of us physically, whether you're rich or poor or not. That's beside the point. You're still a carbon-based fucking life being on Earth. Yet, the people in power insist on doing all this shit. <laughs> and then they get people to uh, represent the public, and they control them through banking and just uh, ways that normal people think is crazy talk. You're being a nut job. But if you look at the circumstances around you, what else defines it? I mean... <laughs> If this isn't a product of corruption, where is all the good shit gone? <laughs> I can't seem to find it outside of my home. You know what I mean? When I go out there, it's, it's not the same. It's changed. People are afraid of getting the virus. And some of them are serious. you got to really understand. I didn't. I don't give a fuck. But they do. So that kind of gives me the upper hand in a sense because uh, it draws you in a mental wavelength that you have no control over. So to live in the negative, knowing what I know about it uh, and being able, in, at least in speech, to think that I can control myself. You know, I can't control what you do, but I can control how I do shit. And that's all that really matters to each of us, I think, is how we respond to life. And life is looking pretty fucked up right now, I'm telling you. And still, even though the big, the big social crap looks like crap, the, the relationships, the personal people, I got uh, sat Monday, I got lost Sunday, but uh, Monday we're going to have family come over for, for the holidays here. And it's not Christmas, it's different, it's 
Cirque tried to explain it to Grimm on the, in her own words. I don't want to paraphrase or copy her. If you want to know, go, go listen to her talk. But it's Monday, and uh, these are some nice people. They come over, and they have some beer, or they smoke a little bit, or they don't. They just have coffee and food and chitter-chatter and clean up and go home. It is amazing. I have never been uh, <laughs> I've never been in a situation with people that were so cooperative. Even uh, the couple down the street that we've be, you know become friends with, they've been invited over to the house through family shit. So my inner web is growing through the devastation of this freaking hoax, no matter what. Uh, <laughs> but then I don't have to just go to like go to Freetown and from where I'm at it would be kind of a pain in the balls. But we know people that do, you know. So it kinda helps out. Everybody knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. <laughs> so it's a spider's web. That's what the small community got, you know. And tripping into it was fuck. I don't know how it happened, it just happened. And here we are, we're still doing what we've always done, you know, for the last seven years. And I don't see a, a particular end in sight. I just see a lot of inconvenience from the, the state to control the people. And uh, But the rewards of it, for fuck's sake, it's sad. Because of <clears throat> what CERT does for a living, it's improved our life, this hope. She gets to stay home and work from the house. It's just fucking bitching. The beach is right there. She takes the dog out. On it. Just life has improved because the state wants to fuck everybody in the ass. It's really weird. But then on the you know on the other hand, I'm a social being and I like I like what I had. But now I got to evolve into the next phase. Whatever's coming in life, you know, they. I've always been able to do it so far. I don't, I don't foresee uh, stumbling and falling down and all that. I just think whatever the change is, I want to know what it is. They haven't specifically come out and said that yet, but they're killing industries, crying out loud. Alcohol, big money in alcohol. But then again, the damage the alcohol does. It's it's a it's a blessing in disguise in one respect and in another way. Hey, wait a minute, that was your tie to society, but it didn't have anything to do with uh, like meeting people to uh, have personal interaction. It was a, a social thing. Go out to the bar and, and get drunk a little bit, and have some fun, and then go home and behave yourself. And now that's all gone. So. I wonder what tomorrow is. <laughs> I don't know. What's going on in the chat here? Oh, did you notice all those evergreen containers on one of those ships, Beth Z? Evergreen containers. They Beth Z is up in Nova Scotia, and Frumpy is in Canada. So that's well, same country area. But I don't. Wow. I don't even, I haven't seen anything except for this little bitty place where I've been for a long time. And luck, I don't fuck, man. I don't know. Don't really want to go anywhere anymore. I got, I got what I wanted. I really would like, you know, remember when Hans used to come in all the time and, you know, keep me updated on uh, Danish law that was coming. He always had my back. Always worried about my health, calling me a pothead so I'd stop smoking pot, making my lungs black. You know, find Jeebus, and, you know, stuff like that. Well, he's gone. Poof. Out. Gone. Three and a half, four years of the guy. He wouldn't go away. And then when he does go away, hey. <laughs> See, I, it's like that beaten dog story where you kick a dog every day. And then one day you stop kicking that dog and the dog misses his kick. Hey, you didn't kick me. And I, I think that's the, you know, that, that negative shit. 
I I laugh at it, but nobody's really doing it anymore. I don't have any pothead remarks. Uh, the, the world is the world is shaping up, as far as I can tell. Hmm. But don't worry, the Jews will fuck it up for you before you know it. They got plans, and they work behind everything else that you're told. So the things that you're told are one thing, and the things that are really happening are kind of like what you're being told, but worse. And you'll find that out in like five, ten years. You'll see. And they've been doing it in increments for, good Lord, since it started. You know? But the lies are hard to prove. You can expose shit on the internet webs and prove all these pricks are lying thieves and nothing is going to ever change what they did. And we live in this uh, retribution society. I'll kill the last nine minutes with this crap. But people want to get revenge and be paid back and get what they earned and their fair share. And all these all these stories and cliches that were, you know, were sold them. You know, they're fed to us through media and if they're in any fucking way real uh, why would one guy have a billion and a billion have a dollar <laughs> see no we're, we're just being um, we're being groomed and controlled and manipulated and counted and sorted and pitted against each other for amusement it's sad but it's the uh it's it's the the last voice anybody's going to listen to right now is the one that's reasonable. They want anger and they want violence. They want to be paid back for what they lost. Oh, you can't do this to me. I'm an American. See, shit like that. And I would probably be going insane if I was in the states right now. So I'm I'm speaking from that. You know, being. Uh, Raised in a place that was one way and moving far, far away to another place and then watching the place that I started out just disintegrate into whatever it's become. It, it It's not what it was when I started there. <laughs> and we were told this was going to happen over and over by every nut job on the planet. They warned us. They said all this shit was going to happen. And, oh, well. So distracted with the Bible and education and politics that I guess people just, they lost the ability to look out with their own two eyes and identify what really is there. Instead, they just took the word for what's there by, ah, they, they got a degree. They, they're an expert, you know, like Bill Gates. He's an expert in vaccines. I heard him say so on a video. Ooh. Okay, first off, how can he possibly be an expert in vaccines when the whole fucking vaccine concept is really just a... It's a bullshit story that fits certain things. It depends on the person that you're talking to at the time <laughs> and how much indoctrination into the vaccine you know, rhetoric that they've been sold. Because you'll get told a lot of things about vaccines that are just blatant bullshit. But if you call that bullshit, oh, you're you don't understand. This was the so and so. No. What what turns out what happened is the truth got bullshitted about, and we're in lockdowns and wearing masks because. The people of the 21st century are still living off the fear of the 19th century. <clears throat> they refuse to adapt to the modern world. They're, they're going to hold us back. <laughs> Sad. And you can't do anything about it except watch it burn. There's nothing that you can do. Uh, except for yourself, whoever yourself may be, or your immediate you know, circle of peers, friends, whatever group you're in. Somebody got, like Grimner says, he's an isolationist. <laughs> but, to be real, he's got all of us on the internet webs as electronic friends to, you know, to be there and hang out with without having to be sneezed on, coughed at, 
puked on or, you know, have anybody leave a mess for you to clean up after they go. <laughs> Shit like that. The incidental crap. And uh, <laughs> then there's some of us that don't give a fuck one way or the other. And time changed me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't used to give a fuck. See, now I give a fuck about some things. I'm just selfish about it. I, I don't seem to give a lot of fuck. But to a few specific things in, in uh, physical life. And the rest of it is just a bunch of horseshit to talk about on the internet webs. Get stoned, play music, or watch movies, or go build something, paint, and do something constructive. But it's winter time, and I'm going to milk winter time because it's cold, and I want to sit on my ass and stay warm. <laughs> so to all of you RLMers out there, mental pancakes, my buddy. I appreciate it. I I didn't really know I had a rant in me that was um, for the radio. I just thought I was thinking, yeah. Anyway, sometimes I feel like doing radio and other times I don't. And without Mary doing the dork tables, it's a little strange still. But outside of that, we've got uh, Grimnir and me coming up on, uh, well, well, let's do the week in order. I guess I'll do a Hal Ant, oh, let's see. I'm still pretty fucked up. But Hal Anthony is on tomorrow and behind from behind the woodshed on RLM. Monday night, it's Grim and me are going to do the uh, It's All Connected. And then Friday, I don't think anything, nobody's coming forward to pick up a show. So I think there's nothing until the Freakers Ball on Friday night. And I looked for it today, but I couldn't find it. So I'm going to go back to Bit Shoot. I hope Grim posted it by now. <laughs> but you, well, sometimes I, I would wait a whole weekend and do it on Monday morning, but that was back when Surf was commuting. Now she, her commute is like 30 seconds. It's amazing. <laughs> she can make it now. Well, yeah, I guess it just matters. Steps to, from the kitchen to the bed, up to her office. It's not a bedroom anymore. <laughs> now it's an office. It's weird how life changes. You know? Anyway. See, what else do we got? We got nothing else. I'm trying to three freaking minutes. What else have I got? I don't know. Uh, it's not as dangerous a world as we think. I think that. Get off that. You know? People are just so depressed right now that they're, they're easily manipulated. And we need something. They've taken music. They've taken food. I don't know what there's left for the state to take away from us that we can't group together and do anything because, you know, they they decided it's for our own good. And like a bunch of dumb fucks, we're going to all sit around with our thumbs up our ass and, okay, I'll do that. Thank you, stay right. <sighs> well, there you go. <laughs> Palestinians are pirates, and I have to be a Palestinian. In the, uh, the end result of my question, I'm not a pirate. I am now a Palestinian and uh, going to have to accept that at some level. But, you know, that little bit of pirate in me that still likes to talk from the armchair because I'm finished with the physical days. They're over. There's nothing left to do but, you know, threaten. And I would. And I, well, it doesn't matter anymore. It's, it's kind of beyond all that. Anyway, uh, what would Hans say? Hans would uh, say something mean to me now, and I would wish on Hans, I would wish everything for you that you wish for me. And I think I do that with everybody. I'm not fussy. If you wish me bad, I wish you bad back. And if you don't, then I don't. I got no ill will. In fact, sometimes it just feels you know, kind of shitty because it's such a waste of time. But there's a balance to this freaking razor blade that we're walking on. Oh, crap. I always cut my feet. But, well, fortunately, it's just life. Anyway, thanks a lot, everybody, for uh, hanging out with me on the dork table on this here, 19th of December in 2020. And uh, you go, y'all go back to what you was doing before I started yakking. Later.